Well, welcome to Tuesday, August 25th, second day of school. But also, as I think many or all of you know, Nancy Giesinger died Sunday morning. And so please do remember Jean and, and her family in your prayers as, as they grieve. She'd been sick a lot and in the hospital a lot. And finally, her body just not could not regroup again. But we're thankful for her. The the good that she has done for this congregation and, and for the Huron community and, for, of course, for her family. As we um, think of those kinds of things, I know one of the things that she really liked doing is coming to Bible study, and so I want to end the um, last Just Love section of our August Bible study with you today which talks about revolutionary integrity. The, um, remember, we started out this whole series for August where there was a pharaoh that came to power that had forgotten Joseph, or did not know Joseph, or have any stories about Joseph. And so he was real taskmaster to the Jewish people. Well, he represents many of the rulers of this world, not just then who are tyrannical and sometimes over their own people, but even more over those who are less fortunate and enslaved. This fellow embodies old patterns of dominion or power over or fear of other physical oppression and ruthlessness. In this system, wealth, and security are more valuable than justice and human dignity. Wealth and security are more valuable than justice and human dignity. This king works in direct contradiction to the just love for which God stands. God is a God of life and supports the weak and the oppressed. Let me say that again. Our God is a God of life and supports the weak and the oppressed. The king's paranoia led him to inflict increasingly harsh labor on the enslaved Hebrews. The power imbalance between the king and the midwife Shipra and Pua is vast. Yet these two women remain steadfast in bringing in new life and light to the world. In a dazzling sermon, including the story of Shipra and Pua, Ada Maria Issa Diaz celebrates the way these midwives use their apparent lack of power in support of their cause. And she describes how women often undermine oppressors by feigning submission while active in subversive ways. Oh, we women can have some power, huh? This is what she says, quote, When Shipra and Pua re-enter the scene, they have to face an angry pharaoh, but they're ready for him. Their task was to bring new life to light. They are not going to allow him to subvert that life, no matter how powerful he is. So we have this wonderful scene of these two women making fun of the Pharaoh, telling him that the Hebrew women were so strong that they gave birth before the midwives could even arrive. These two seemingly submissive women are now victorious. Every time I get to this point in the story, I want to give Shipra and Pua a standing ovation. And then she goes into talking about revolutionary integrity by saying, quote, The Word of God says to us today, Resist obliteration, resist death, struggle to hope for tomorrow, struggle to live. The Word of God calls us today to be clear that to struggle for life is to do the will of God and to struggle for life often requires of us revolutionary integrity, commitment to life, disobeying oppressive unjust authorities, oppress oppressive religious structures also, she mentions, and religious authority, because we know we have the hierarchy for us too, don't we? 
Revolutionary integrity is about living the life that is given to us by God, even if we have to struggle to live fully with every ounce of our being. End of her quote, the quoting of her sermon. Friends, we are called to seek life and light for all people, even when the work means struggle and risk. The pursuit of just love will not be welcomed by oppressive authorities who seek to maintain their power at any cost. But the Bible is full of surprising, subversive victories that God's just love makes possible. In, and a question for us. In what ways have women you have known brought light to despite difficult odds or in defiance of those in power. We know that we talked, I know we talked about how we've seen many women doing that. And we, there are nameless women who have been defiant in doing this. We think of Shipra and Pua. We think of all the people that tried to help out during the Nazi regime. And, and um, also those who tried to help with, with what's going, what has happened with when the, uh, um, when the things that have happened with our, with our um, the freeing of the slaves. And we know that God has helped us to do those things too. We encourage you to think of those people in your lives that because out of love of you, they have helped you get as far as you've been able to get, to free you from various burdens and bondages. We thank God for being the kind of God that looks out for the little ones, because we know those rich, powerful people take over and they totally ramrod and don't care for any of us. Let us pray. God of strength, God of purpose, Give us power to defy the voices of evil that seek to harm your children. Thank you for the courage of the women and the men who inspire us by their example. Teach us to be both brave and bold. Be with us, Lord, as we follow in their path. Help us to follow our, your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to teach us what just love looks like. And Lord, as, as we're in getting into the second day of school, we pray that you continue to walk with us. You are the wisest of all teachers. We give you thanks for the gift of reason, the opportunities for us to continue to learn, no matter how young or how old we are. But Lord, we know it's got to start somewhere and sometime. We pray that your blessings rest upon schools, and we pray for our Huron School District and all the school districts in our area. May they be places of safety and learning. And as the coronavirus is giving us opportunities to discover new safe ways to educate, we ask you give us wisdom, patience, kindness, love, faith, and hope with, as we wrestle with the hard issues that present themselves in these challenging times. We take time to give thanks for school administrators, school boards, educators, paraprofessionals, support staff, and all connected to our school districts. And we entrust these dedicated people and communities to your care, knowing that you provide us as you see we need. We lift up parents and students as their hearts are anxious. We pray your care be upon them, shepherding God. Make yourself known to them as you calm their fears, ease their burdens, and give them good courage. Lord, we also, also lift up to you the family of Nancy Giesinger. We pray that you be with Jean and the rest of the family as, as they grieve through this time, knowing that she has always been with them and a spark in their lives. And we pray for all of us who are ill. We pray that you will, your healing power rest upon everyone and be with the medical teams that are working with people. Give them your insight and wisdom to do the things that are needed and necessary to help us all stay safe and healthy. 
And Lord, we, all these things and anything else you see we need, please grant us as we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And indeed, God's peace, blessings, grace, and hope uphold you this day and always. Amen.